Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Brandon Clements and welcome back to another video here on Glass Hand. I'm excited to be back to talk about probably one of the most important topics when it comes to Unreal Engine and working together in teams or just by yourself, and that is source control. So uh, I know ooh, source control, everyone's super excited and uh, yelling at their screens like, whoa, let's go source control. But seriously, it is something that you guys really need to implement in all your projects, especially when you're working working with other people. It's a way to keep track of how your project is evolving. So this is what I use. Uh, I've used a lot of different source control projects in the past. Uh, I usually stick to Git uh, just because I know it really well, uh, but I've also set up Perforce servers, uh, both on-prem and AWS. Uh, a lot of different things, plastic, uh, you know, you name it, I've probably used it in some form or capacity, but man, it is, incredibly important and I think you're gonna see that as you watch the video and as I illustrate all this and explain it to you so this is for beginners and also for intermediate users so welcome hi my name is Brandon uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel or like this video if you guys actually get something out of this and uh, if you don't comment below and tell me why so uh, you can see this is a project that I have on github.com this is my own uh, repository here and uh, I have 12 commits to this project. This is just an ongoing thing that I like to update for new features for VR and Unreal Engine. And you can see my initial commit uh, was two months ago. And then as I go upward, you see how I'm implementing things into this project. Um, so it's great to be able to uh, notate exactly what you're doing and have a list of changes. And if something breaks, you can always go back or you can create uh, new branches. Right now, this is just on the master branch, but you can create branches for team members. So I could have a Brandon branch and a uh, another branch for another team member, and then you can merge those branches together um, as you keep on developing. So it's an extremely val valuable resource. Okay, so now that I've done the initial explanation, let's start talking about how to get this going. So you need to create a GitHub account. So go to github.com, create an account. Uh, go through all the account creations. I, it's 2024, so I know you guys know how to create accounts and install software. But if you have any questions, post them down below. Uh, then you need to install Git, so just G-I-T. So go ahead and go to Google and type download Git. You'll come to this page. Go to Windows. If you're using Windows, Mac, you know the drill. Uh, and then you'll need Git LFS. So you have to use Git LFS because traditionally Git, uh, it's only looking at uh, like typed code. Uh, so you would actually have diffs between um, versions of type code. So if you were using something like C Sharp and Unity, you would actually just, it would change little, literally like just lines or like a word in the actual code. Uh, but with Git LFS, you're going to have versions of a large format file size. So um, something like a binary file, like uh, PSD, um, something where you can't change it line by line, right? You're just going to have full revisions. So you have to use uh, LFS. So yeah, it works pretty well though. Um, I, I like it a lot. So you're going to want to download and install all of these things. And then let's go ahead and just start a simple project in Unreal Engine. So I'm just going to do a, a third person project and you can see my uh, directory for my local repository is uh, on a separate uh, M.2 drive. So D uh, Perforce, <laughs> because I was using Perforce for a, for a long time. I, I love Perforce. I think it integrates well with the engine, but Git also is really good uh, nowadays. It integrates really well um, with the engine. So we're going to go ahead and just start with a third person template project file. Exciting. I know. I know you guys haven't seen this before, right? Uh, so then when it comes up, uh, we'll go ahead and... Uh, do what it's saying down here. And then literally right below that uh, in the bottom right, which of course I'm covering up. Uh, let's see, let me hide my webcam. You're gonna have revision control. So they've changed the wording here. It used to be version control. Um, now they're calling it revision control. It's basically the same thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect to the revision control and I'm gonna use Git. Um, it says beta, but it actually works really, really well. Uh, this is the Git path to uh, your program files where Git is living um, locally on your hard drive. So uh, that's probably going to be the same uh, unless you've changed it. And then the root of the repository, so the project, your username, email, 
and uh, then you're going to want to add a git ignore file. So this is uh, Unreal Engine. They go ahead and give you a git ignore because there's a lot of files that you don't need to have on version control. Uh, you're going to have an intermediate folder with every project. You're going to have a derived data cache. Uh, you're going to have a saved folder. And uh, I believe that's it. We'll, we'll check that out later. But those folders can be built individually per computer, so you don't need to share that with the team. Oh, uh, also the builds folder. Um, I, I create a folder called builds. Um, those are for actual compiled versions of the project, so like an Android or a uh, Windows uh, EXE, like an actual compiled version of the project or a cooked version of the project. You don't necessarily need to share those files with your team members. They could probably just go ahead and run those uh, individually and have their build folders locally. Uh, don't share that with the actual repository. And then you can add a git attributes, which will enable git LFS. So you're going to want to enable this and uh, go ahead and make the initial git commit, which is what you see um, on my other project. So if I was going to go to the web, bring this back up again. So you can see this is the, the initial commit. And if I was to click on it here, uh, you can see that if I go to my git attributes and my git ignore, you can see that it started git LFS for us. And then these are all the files and folders that it's going to ignore. So we'll go back down to version control, connect to version control. Um, and I think all of this looks good. We'll go ahead and tick that once again. And then we're going to say initialize project with git and it's going to add those files to the revision control successful and the check-in was successful and we're going to go ahead and accept okay um so you can use any type of uh version control software to pair with this i like to use github desktop just because it integrates so well um, so what you would do now is we're going to add a local repository so let me go ahead and just changes really fast. So we'll come down and we'll add local repository. We'll find the path to our project and then we'll go into our Perforce folder. And then I called this source control. And this is our project where our Git folder is. And then we'll say add repository. And then we'll go ahead and say initialize with Git LFS. Yes, that's good. Okay, and then uh, we can actually publish this to GitHub. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now and everything here looks great you can actually keep this code private if you're paying for github i believe this is a feature um and, but let's go ahead and just publish this real quick okay and that just took like maybe a couple of seconds and you can see my initial commit with all the files that were added to the repository these are individual files here and you can click on the individual files and the ones that are actual uh, text like the dot i and i's you're going to see absolutely everything that was added and then the u assets again you're going to just see uh, a pointer file how big it is and uh, this version of git lfs Okay, so then we're back on the changes page. Let's say we're, we're going to do something awesome to our project. Uh, we're going to create a new folder, and we're going to call this Blueprints. And then we're going to add a Blueprint class, and it's going to be an actor class. And we're going to call it BP My BP because that's incredible, right? Okay, and then you get uh, a green check down here. Of course, I'm covering it up once again. Woohoo! I've probably done this in the past and you guys hate me for it, but we have a green check down here. And then we also have a question mark here, like a little Riddler question mark. So we got to right click on this and we got to mark this for add, or we can just go ahead and hit save and we'll get a green plus. So on revision control, we have revert refresh. Uh, we can check in, check out. Um, and this is basically the panel that you're going to use per files um, that are in your project, right? So you could revert this um, and it will go back to its original state, it says. Or uh, if we were going to revert this here, uh, it would go ahead and delete it. Uh, or we can refresh it if someone on our team has actually updated this. Um, but I don't believe um, you can check this out um, with GitHub which kind of sucks <laughs> because that's the great thing about Perforce. 
So let me go ahead and bring my face back here. That's the great thing about Perforce is if you have an on-prem server and you're running these projects, uh, say you have a, an animation studio or a game studio, uh, you can actually say, no, I'm going to check this out and lock the file. And that way no one can actually make updates to it while you have it checked out. But with Git, I don't believe you can do that. That's uh, not a feature yet, but it, I don't know. Maybe in the future we might get something. Uh, but... Anywho, let's go ahead and check this back in. We're going to submit this and you can see that we've added and we're going to say implemented an awesome blueprint. Okay, and then we're going to submit. And then if we go back to our little source control software that we're using, uh, which I think is, here we are. Okay, so back on our source control, we're using uh, GitHub Desktop. Like I said, you can use Source Tree. You can use it. There's a million of them out there. Um, but anyways, I'm going to go ahead and uh, check all of this. And yep, this is adding an asset here. And you do want to be careful in this instance. Um, you might check in files that you don't mean to. Like, let's say you were working on a persistent UMAP. And let's say that you and your team said, uh, we're going to use uh, level streaming and no one should check out the the, the persistent map or whatever. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that you're not checking in that persistent map because it might uh, update on everyone's end and it might screw things up. You know, little things like that. Um, you just want to make sure that you know what you're checking in and what you're pushing. So I'm going to go ahead and push this change to the origin here. And it has obviously been updated on my computer. And if we went ahead and checked the, uh, the repository, uh, let's go ahead and navigate back to our repositories. And uh, I'm going to go check that out here. Source control. Okay, so here we are. And it has one branch and two commits. And we can see that um, one minute ago, I implemented an awesome blueprint. So <laughs> great job for me, right? Um, so I just want to make this abundantly clear what's actually happening here. Uh, there's, and I'm using Microsoft Paint because I'm an absolute professional. Um, so this is like the remote repository, remote repo. And this is in the sky. It's in the cloud. <laughs> and then down here on the earth are us humans. And uh, I have a computer. You know, my buddy has a computer. And then uh, another guy has a computer, right? And we're all working on this game project together. And this is, uh, this is me. This is him. And this is the other guy. And we each have a copy of Unreal Engine and an instance of this project, right? Uh, I shouldn't say instance, I should say like a, a local copy, right? These are all different computers um, that have a copy of the project. And as you make changes, this goes up into here. You know, he makes a change, he makes a change, and then we all have to merge those changes into here, which is the, uh, the ground truth. And this is our working game um, at the top. And everyone is just working and building that ground truth in the cloud, basically. I hate using those terms. But like on Git, uh, GitHub servers, they're going to host uh, your actual ground truth of the project. So if anything was to happen to anyone's local computer, it's it's okay. It's totally fine. Like, you know, it sucks for those people <laughs> who would have to get a new hard drive or whatever new computer in some cases. Um, but it, this means that you could work on your laptop, you could work on your desktop, um, whatever. It doesn't matter. You can always contribute to the ground truth of your project. And uh, you can always revert easily, um, so on and so forth. So I'll go ahead and show you uh, what that would look like if you wanted to revert. I'm gonna go ahead and just close the engine itself and <laughs> go ahead and not, not gonna save my artwork this time. Um, but if I was to right click here and uh, go into revert changes and commit. Okay. Um, it's kind of funny because it's going to give me another history line here uh, that's going to say, oh, hey, I'm actually deleting this file. Notice there's a, a deleted uh, mark here. And you actually have to push this once again to the remote repository. So I'm going to go ahead and push this. And uh, now we can see 
if I was to open our project once again and look at the content drawer, uh, notice I do not have a blueprints folder. It has been reverted uh, locally. And if I was to refresh here, it has been reverted. Uh, there is no more blueprint. Okay, so I hope in this video that I've illustrated how important source control can be to a project and how vital it is for me and my workflow. Even if I'm just working by myself, I like to have source control on so I can make a lot of changes. I can be experimental. I can invoke a lot of experimental options, test them. And if I don't like them, I can just go in and revert the changes and no harm, no foul. Um, so I hope that illustrates it in a, in a good way, in a positive way for you guys. Um, there are going to be times when you have team members working on the same file and you have to uh, have solutions for merge conflicts. And in that instance, uh, if you're using GitHub desktop or any other um, version control software locally, it will actually help you through that. It will tell you, hey, uh, person A and person B have made changes to the same file. Which one do you want to keep? And then you just choose person A. I want to choose their file. So you have to stay in communication with your team and you have to understand what each other's responsibilities are, um, especially if you're doing like a game jam or something like that where you're working really fast. Um, the another thing that this just makes me think of is you want to push early and often uh, so if you implement something into the game or you change something um, you're not going to want to wait till the end of the day to make those pushes um, if you do uh, a small thing and you implement something or you change something go ahead and do those pushes um, as early and as often as possible because you may not know that you're breaking something until someone else in your team pulls and then they, you understand in the larger picture it's not going to work. So you just need to be aware of uh, kind of how you're working in a team and how you're affecting and impacting your project. Okay, so I think that will do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for following along and making it to this far in the video. If uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe and ring the notification bell. I don't upload often, but when I do, I try to make it worth your time. So I appreciate your attention and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.